Later this year, we're going to be doing some camper electrical system upgrades that are not going to include alternator charging. And I want to take this video to explain why you may or may not want to incorporate alternator charging into your camper electrical system. Welcome to Explorers.life. My name is Nate and I teach people how to build DIY campers. Let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is the three charging rates of different alternator chargers. So at the 30 amp mark, we've got the Victron Orion. It's going to charge at about 30 amps at 12 volts, which is about 360 watts. Runs about 250 bucks minus installation or wires or anything like that. Next up is going to be the 100 amp Victron Buck Boost, 1200 watts about $1,200 minus wires and installation. And lastly is going to be a secondary alternator, which is gonna charge it a lot. So kind of depends on which alternator you get, but let's just say for easy figuring, 200 amps, uh, 2,400 watts, and those are pricey at like $1,500, about $600 for whatever like brackets and everything to add the secondary alternator plus whatever installation costs are going to be, because uh, those can be involved. So building off of those three figures of the 30 amp, 100 amp, and 200 amp charging rates, uh, let's talk about how long does it take for those three components to charge a battery bank. Well, we need to start figuring out uh, the time to charge the battery bank, and we're just going to figure in terms of a completely discharged battery bank to a completely full battery bank. And I actually have a calculator on our site that I'll link to in the video description. That is a time to charge calculator. And it lets you put in the battery bank voltage, uh, the amp hours of each battery you have, the number of batteries, and then it'll tell you how many amp hours the battery bank has in it. And then you can put in the slider for charging amperage, and you can change the charging amperage. And below that, it will tell you how long it's going to take to charge the battery bank from empty to full. So for example, we can put in 12 volt battery bank, 100 amps per battery, three batteries in the battery bank, which is equivalent to a 300 amp hour battery bank. And then we can say the charging amperage, let's slide it to 30 amps and pretend that we have a 300 amp hour battery bank that we're trying to charge from empty to full off of the 30 amp Orion that we talked about earlier. And that tells us it's going to take about 10 hours of driving to charge it from completely empty to completely full. So understanding the charging rates of the different components and their relationship to how long those devices take to charge the battery bank is really important because, you know, if we take our slider and we change this to uh, 10 batteries, which is going to yield a thousand amp hour battery bank, that's going to tell us that it's going to take 33 hours of driving to charge our 1000 amp hour battery bank from a 30 amp charger, which I don't know about you, but for me, that's pretty much unreasonable. I'm never driving for 33 hours at a time to charge that battery bank from empty to full. So another consideration on your alternator sizing, as well as if you should even do alternator charging at all, is how much solar do you have? So I think the biggest loads that any kind of RVer is going to have is probably gonna be an air conditioner. It seems like everybody wants to be able to run their air conditioner while they're off grid. And I just don't think that the alternator is the best choice for that because you usually don't need your air conditioner while you're driving down the road necessarily. You have your air conditioner that is run off of your engine for keeping you cool while that's happening. When you're parked, you know, you may not want to run your engine all the time to allow your air conditioner to run. And this brings up the consideration of solar. You know, if you're parked and you have a big RV, let's say like a big class A motorhome or a fifth wheel camper or something like that, you might have enough solar to not even need to worry about alternator charging. And the specific example I have about that is, I think it was two years ago, I went up to Indiana and helped Victron design and install the electrical system that was in their tour trailer a few years ago. Now we had 2000 watts of solar up on the roof of that camper. And we also had a Victron Buck Boost 100 amp uh, DC to DC charger that was allowing charging from the starting battery. And I don't even recommend that setup. Now we had to put it in that particular setup because it was an educational tool, but in a real world scenario, that 100 amp buck boost uh, is only 1200 watts. 
And ultimately we had 2000 watts of solar panels up on top of the RV. So that would have been more beneficial just to let solar do the charging and not even use alternator charging from that 100 amp buck boost. It was kind of less efficient to even use the alternator than just let solar do its job. And then you don't have to run the engine to charge while you're just sitting there. Hey, Future Nate here. Uh, when we were reviewing the video, realized I forgot something. Uh, let's talk about generators real quick. If you have a generator, either a built-in generator or a portable generator, either way, I am also going to recommend considering not doing alternator charging. And the reason is because if you have a generator, you have an internal combustion engine that is designed specifically to produce electricity. On your alternator, you have an internal combustion engine that's designed not really to produce electricity, but to push you down the road. So I would say to forego alternator charging if you have a generator, because you don't want to put the additional stress on that engine that's designed to be pushing down the road, and instead consider using the engine that's designed specifically to produce electricity. Back to the video. Now, if you're in a camper van or something much smaller and you know you can only really have four to 800 watts of solar, then alternator charging is pretty much always going to be a good idea. It's pretty rare that you'd be able to get 1200 watts of solar onto a camper van. I've seen it done, but it's not very common. And that's pretty much it. Those are really my four considerations when thinking about whether you do include or don't include alternator charging and you know what particular device that you like to try to use for alternator charging, whether that's the 30 amp Orion, uh, 100 amp buck boost, or a second alternator or no alternator charging at all. Well, I hope this helped you make a decision. We'll see you next time.